Hi, I'm Dr. Ed Kleeman. This video is on hip labrum tears. We go into the concept of impingement and how that leads to labrum tears. And then later on in the video, we go into the actual arthroscopic video so you can watch what a procedure looks like. If you want to jump ahead to that video, it's at about 11 minutes into this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. The anatomy of the hip is essentially a ball and socket joint, and it's a deep socket. And that socket is called the acetabulum, and the ball is called the femoral head. Now, what is the labrum? So, the labrum is essentially a soft ring of cartilage that circles the hip socket. And here, if you're looking, let's say, straight on the uh, hip socket, you'd see the blue would be the socket, and that orange would be the ring around it, that labrum. And here is an artistic rendering um, that shows that as well. So what is the essential functions of the labrum? So it helps do a couple of things. One is improve stability and reduce stress. And here you could see that it helps deepen the socket. Okay, And deepening the socket um, will actually help improve stability. The other thing it does is it increases some of the contact area. So you can imagine that it almost extends the socket a little bit. And that reduces some of the contact stresses. And the other thing that it does is it forms a seal, okay? And this sealing mechanism uh, helps keep the fluid inside of the hip, and that's important, uh, you know, because it helps also keep the contact stresses down. Uh, when there's a tear, the contact stresses go up. So these are some of the important mechanisms and functions of the hip labrum. There are different causes for a labrum tear. Femoral acetabular impingement, or otherwise called FAI, is the main topic of this video, and we'll go into exactly what that is. There are other reasons, such as DDH, which is developmental dysplasia of the hip. There's trauma. Sometimes someone could have an injury, like a dislocation, that can lead to a tear. Repetitive microtrauma, that's really like an athlete who might overuse their hip a lot. You can imagine like a hockey player, or maybe a dancer. Um, or a golfer, someone like that who keeps twisting and pivoting around the hip, that can get a tear. There is a muscle tendon unit that rubs in front of the capsule, and that could sometimes cause a tear in a very tight iliopsoas. And then there's degenerative labral tears, which is part of arthritis. So again, the main one that we see is the FAI and sometimes the repetitive microtrauma. And we're going to spend this video talking about the FAI. FAI, or femoral acetabular impingement. And so here you'll see uh, all the way on the left side of a screen the normal hip where you can see this concave uh, what we call femoral neck. That's the neck of the hip. And you see how that, that's normal. Now in the middle picture here you have what's called cam FAI. And what that means is that that femoral neck is not concave, it's convex. So that bump will now keep bumping into the acetabulum, the socket side, and can lead to tears of the labrum and breakdown of the cartilage and this can occur. Uh, and then the last one is what we call pincer FAI, where instead of it, where the problem is is that there's too much bony overgrowth on the acetabulum side, and that can cause pinching. Um, so these would be the three different. These are the two different reasons why people will get uh, this CAM FAI. And in truth, many people have a combination. Okay, so here's an x-ray. So on the left side of the screen, you can see the normal concave uh, surface of the femoral neck. And then on the right side with that white arrow, you can see the bump. That would be a patient with CAM FAI. Now, uh, an example of a pincer FAI, you could see on the right side of the screen, a normal acetabulum and femoral head and neck. But here on the left side of the screen, by the yellow, um, by the yellow arrow, you could see that's the pincer. That's the extra bony overgrowth that you could see in yellow that we just highlighted. The other thing that sometimes happens with this pincer FAI is that the acetabulum could be retroverted or rotated facing more posteriorly towards the back. And what that will cause is bumping of the femoral neck and the acid and the acetabulum labrum and that can cause tearing over time. The other reason that sometimes we can have an issue is that on the right side of the screen would be let's say a normal acetabulum with normal coverage. Some people can have a really deep socket where there's too much coverage and that can also cause a problem. 
And here's an example of a patient with both a CAM and pincer FAI. So the white arrows pointing to the CAM uh, extra bump, that con uh, vexity, and then the red arrow showing the pincer. And here we just highlighted those two areas. Uh, and you can imagine in a surgical procedure where we would remove those. Okay, so next issue is how do you know if you have a labrum tear? Okay, so if you're a patient, how do you know? So some of the typical things that patients will complain of is groin pain. It's very common. So some patients will point to the side of their hip, their back of the hip, but the most common location is the groin, okay? Many patients will feel clicking or locking or catching, and that's very common also if you have a labrum tear. And many patients will complain of twisting and pivoting maneuvers that will cause these discomforts. The other thing we could see in the CAM pincer FAI is that sitting for long periods of time can actually exacerbate these symptoms because those two bones are bumping into each other for a long period of time in that city position. All right, so what's the doctor gonna do? What, do you, what happens when you go to the doctor? So the first thing the doctor has to figure out is where is the pain coming from? Because the hip is actually a very complicated area. All right, so the first thing the doctor has to figure out is, is the pain coming from inside the joint or is it coming from outside the joint, okay? So if the pain is coming from inside the joint, then it might be a labrum tear or a cartilage injury, okay? Or maybe it's coming from outside the joint from a muscle problem, or maybe it's coming from someone's back and they're getting like sciatica symptoms and that's what's causing the pain around the hip area. So it's very important, that's what the doctor's going to do. They're gonna to try to figure out where your pain is coming from. Is it from in the joint or from outside the joint? Now the doctor's gonna do a lot of different tests. Uh, some of the specific tests that they'll do to look out for the labrum uh, tear is um, the Faber test, where they essentially, as you can see in this picture, will cross the patient's leg and see how far down or close can the knee get to the table. And they'll compare it from one side to the other. So one is we'll see the distance, and if it doesn't go down far enough, that can sometimes mean that there's um, pathology or problem with the labrum, or sometimes a really tight iliopsoas, that's the tendon inside the groin region that we showed previously. Uh, and, and so pain is important, and the distance from the table. Another test that we'll often do is called the anterior impingement test, and here you can see where the doctor will flex the knee, push it over what we call adduction, and then rotate the hip in to see if we can catch that labrum. We're trying to catch it and see if we can cause pain by catching this torn fragment. Another test is called the scour test, where basically the physician or whoever's testing is gonna apply pressure into the joint and start rotating in and out, again, trying to see if they can catch that torn piece and see if that there's a tear. And, that, and these are just some of the tests but there are many other things the doctor will look at, sort of how the patient walks and their alignment and a bunch of other things. Um, the other thing that um, the physician will sometimes do is to help verify that if the problem is inside the joint, is send the patient off for an ultrasound guided hip injection. And sometimes this is just with an anesthetic even. And the goal here is that if they get an injection into the joint itself, and it takes away the pain, even for a few hours, well then that helps us know that the pain is coming from in the joint, say from a labrum tear, versus coming from a muscle problem or tendon problem, which is outside the joint. So these guided injections are very helpful diagnostically. The next thing the doctor will do is get some imaging, and we'll start with x-rays. And here, as we showed in this same x-ray we showed previously, this one showing the the CAM pincer defect. They'll look for the CAM pincer FAI issues, DDH issues, look for arthritis, and if there's trauma, obviously, to look if there's dislocations or fractures. And the MRI is a special test that's a magnet, and it helps us see the soft tissue in the hip. On this image, I will use the pointer, and here, with this white arrow showing you in the upper right-hand corner, this white signal is the actual the tear. Okay, and um, this here is the labrum tear. This is the labrum. The white shows the tear. This area over here is the acetabulum. These three arrowheads show the cam defect on the femoral neck, 
which can cause impingement. Non-operative management for a hip labrum tear consists basically of three things. One is modify activity, number two, physical therapy, number three, sometimes medication. So let's start with modifying activity. So we'll often try to tell patients to avoid twisting and pivoting type of activities since these things can sometimes aggravate or catch that labrum tear, sometimes make it worse and more painful. And a physical therapist can help patients figure out how to change some of their daily activities to accommodate that. Then moving into physical therapy, so physical therapy, even though it can't actually heal a labrum tear, but by improving the function of the muscles and the tendons and how we use the hip and the and the uh, core muscles can really make a difference, help decrease pain and improve function. And then the last part, taking a medication. So if a patient's having a lot of pain and inflammation, NSAIDs, things like Aleve or Advil or Motrin can sometimes help. Now, if patients have GI problems or cardiac problems, they may not be able to take those medicines, so they really need to check with their physician prior to taking any medication. Now there is a limited ability for the hip labrum to heal without surgery. So there have been recent advances in arthroscopic surgical techniques that really allow specially trained orthopedic surgeons to go in there arthroscopically and repair the tears and even address some of the defects in FAI, the cam and the pincer problems, hingement. So how is the surgery done? So you could see here on this sort of uh, model uh, on the table where there's traction and the patient is on here and the traction allows us to uh, pull on the leg and to be able to make room for us to do the procedure. And here is just a setup in the operating theater what that would look like once the patient's all prepped up and ready to go. And you could see here there's uh, that big machine sitting on top. This uh, item here, that's an x-ray machine. And then in the right uh, corner is the arthroscopic monitor that we'll be using and both of these are necessary during this procedure. Here is an x-ray showing the hip, uh, okay, and you can see here the joint space is very narrow, hard to get in there, but here in this image you can see once we've pulled traction it really opens up the space here and now we have a big space that we're able to get into to do the procedure. So here in this video we're arthroscopically looking inside of a hip. My probe is on the cartilage at the chondral labral junction. So that cartilage is the actual cartilage on the acetabulum, which got peeled off and torn down because of this CAM FAI. And here you can see how the labrum, which is this tissue we're touching up here, is all sort of torn up and shredded. And this is obviously in this person, years of rubbing and... Now because this patient has a pincer, we're also going to be burrowing down that bone on the acetabular rim that's that extra bone. So here what we are doing is, is we are burrowing down this bone and that is the acetabulum side, that pincer. Um, just to the left of the burr would be the labrum and then just to the left of the labrum would be the uh, femoral head. And so here we're just burrowing it down until we get to a uh, a surface that matches what we want to do on x-ray and we use an x-ray to verify what we're doing. So here we pass some sutures around the labrum. You can see we've passed one anchor and now we're passing the second anchor and here we've placed the suture and we passed it through this eyelet on an anchor which is a device that we can put into the bone and this is not metal. And then what we're going to do is we use a little mallet and we bang that anchor into the bone and that's what secures the sutures that are holding that labrum and secure it back down to the bone. And here we've, we're knocking it down and then we're going to remove the uh, metallic insert device. And again, there's no metal that's left inside the hip. This is video from another surgery, again, just showing how we're securing the suture. And here you could see the white anchor with the ribs on it that helps get better stability and fixation inside the bone. And that suture is attached to the front of the anchor through a little what's called eyelet. And then here we are malleting the anchor into the bone, which is again going to secure the suture that's holding the labrum back to, down to the bone. And then we remove the metal insert device. And again, there's no metal left. And then here we remove it. And then you can see left is the anchors in the bone that are holding the sutures and keeping the labrum fixated back to the acetabulum. Now here what we're looking at is the femoral head neck junction and you can see that bump that is the cam defect 
okay and that bump right here is the cam defect at the head neck junction that we're going to need to remove and there you can see the repair of that labrum and again there's the bump and we burr down the bump and we just slowly do this and we contour it as we need to and we do that under direct visualization and also with the help of the x-ray fluoroscopy machine and this is what it looks like when we're done so you can really see that we've got rid of the bump and we have now a nice concave junction by the femoral neck and head most of the time these procedures are done as ambulatory surgery procedures meaning the patients go home the same day we usually have patients use crutches and be partial weight bearing so they don't put all their weight on for about four to six weeks we also often have the patient wear a brace for a few weeks as well. Using an ice compression device can really help reduce some of the pain, so we usually recommend that. And then we have patients take pain medication. Again, they'll have to check with their physician what's appropriate for them. Uh, physical therapy is also very helpful to start getting back range of motion, improving the dynamics and how their hip works. And then getting back to sports and activity can sometimes take six months for a patient to be able to get to back to real sports. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any patients or friends who are suffering through a hip labrum tear, feel free to share this video with them. Thank you and have a great day.